Hey, you guys. So, new setup, who this? <laughs> you guys, I'm like a real YouTuber. We got a ring light. We got a background. We're like YouTubers. I had to put a hat on because this ring light was exposing how bad I need to retouch my hair, okay? It was real bad. So I was like, let me throw a little little hat on so I don't look so uh, ratchet. <laughs> it might still look ratchet. Whatever. So anyway, I was like, I got this new setup. I got my ring light. Um, it's about time that I do a motherfucking story time. And this is one that I've been meaning to tell for quite some time. But I've actually tried to, I tried to record this once, like, a long time ago, and I realized, like, how fucking bad I still was. And, like, now, honestly, it's, like, laughable. I've gotten up, I've had to learn my, to laugh at myself for my own stupidity. So, anyway, let me tell you a little ditty about how I caught my ex-boyfriend cheating on me. <laughs> That I this guy had dated for six years and this motherfucker was cheating on me the whole time. And the people that I was friends with knew it. And they didn't even tell me. Mm. Anyway, so here's the story. Let me tell you what happened. So in order for this story to make any sense at all, I have to take you back about 12 years ago, something like that, when I met the dumbass, right? I was like 16 at the time. I was dating this little crusty dude. <laughs> and uh, he was like, oh my God, like you have to meet my friend so-and-so. I don't know if I'm even gonna name my fucking ex or not. We'll, we'll get there. I'll, I'll decide later if I'm gonna name him, but right now he's just gonna be dumbass. So anyway, he's like, oh my God, you gotta meet my dumbass friend and his girlfriend. Like they're gonna be coming every day. This guy I'm dating when I'm 16, right? I'm like, okay. So they come over and this guy walks in the room and I'm like, oh, like angels are singing. Like, I'm like, this guy is gorgeous. Like he's the man of my dreams. Like I'm like, yes. I'm like 16 year old me is like knowing full well that no relationship I'm in as a sophomore in high school is going to be like that serious. So I was like, cool. Like I'm going to date this guy for a while. That's my next boyfriend. <laughs> I was like, I call him this one. I'm going to claim him. That one's mine. So, uh, years go by, right? I kind of honestly wasn't even thinking about him. Me and the other guy obviously broke up. I dated a couple other people. Ended up dating this guy that was friends with old dumbass, right? The, the, that's, the, that's Like I said, we're just going to call him dumbass. I think that's fair. He earned that title. <laughs> Since he cheated on me for six years, must be pretty fucking dumb. Anyway, so, um, and by the way, I always get people there like, I can't believe you cussed. Like, baby, this video is not made for children. So if you're watching this with your, your little kitties, uh, this is about to be a story time about how I caught my ex-boyfriend cheating on me. So, um, there's going to be quite a lot of cussing. Okay. So if you don't like cussing, this is not your video, babe. Anyway, so like I said, um, I was dating this guy that was friends with dumbass. So I kind of like reconnected with him. This was like, I don't know, maybe f four or five years after I originally met him previously. Okay. So I'm dating this other guy that knows him. Okay. Listen, so just to, to make a little sense out of this, I like musicians and I tend to like musicians of a certain genre, like metalhead musicians. I'm done with them. So don't even, if you're a metalhead musician, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm done with your kind. <laughs> but e either way, I, um, because of that, I ended up dating people that kind of, like, knew each other through the metal scene. Anyway, so, like I said, this guy I'm dating knows Dumbass. Dumbass and his girlfriend that he'd been dating for, like, I don't know, an eternity, they had broken up. And me and the guy I was dating, we were breaking up. We were on our way out. So, um, anyway, the stars aligned, and I linked up with dumbass. Uh, it just kind of like worked out. We both were at the same little metal show together. I was real excited because I had had a crush on him for a long time. And at this point, me and him were both single. I was like, are the stars finally aligning? And like, in one sense, yeah, <laughs> it did align, but not in a good way. <laughs> it was not a good thing for me at all. But the stars did align. I did end up getting to date this guy, but this is how terribly bad it went. Okay. <laughs> so 
like I said, he'd been dating that same girl forever and ever and ever. But they, at least from what he told me, they were like done, done, right? So me and him get together um, and we're talking. We're like, oh, honey, I was head over heels, like fucking just dumb, stupid in love with this guy. Like just couldn't get enough of them. So anyway, he was in a touring band. He, me and him hung out like every single day and then he had to go on tour for like, like a month. So we hung out for a month. They had to go on tour for like a month, right? So we hung out every day. He goes on tour. Um, and then the agreement was that I was going to go because his tour was going to end. He was going to be somewhere that was like eight hours away. And the in-between point was Tennessee. So the plan was I was going to take off work and go get him from Tennessee and bring him back here. Uh, so that's what I did. I went and got his little stupid ass from Tennessee, drove all the way up there, got him, brought him back, took, like, I, I don't even remember. It was a several days off so that we could just, like, spend all this time together. So we spent all this time together. And I literally, it was, like, three, four days that we were together. And then, literally, I had to go back to work. <laughs> and I get to work that night. I work night shift at this corporate daycare where I was just like cleaning at night. So, you know, I could take phone calls while I was at work or whatever, right? So I'm at work. It's like 11 o'clock at night and I get a call from this dumbass that like, <laughs> I'm so bleh, like crying. And I'm like, what is going on? He's like, I just hooked up with my ex-girlfriend. I'm so sorry. Like, I love you. Or not, I don't even know if we were saying I love you yet. But he's like, I'm so into you. Like, I don't want to ruin this and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, um, I got to take this in. Because I, I knew, I knew better, frankly. I knew better. Like, my gut was telling me, like, well, that this is it for this little fling. Like, it was fun for, like, the month that it lasted. But this has got to be it, right? That's what my gut was telling me. What I did was the complete opposite. I went over there. He told me he was sorry. I was like, oh, well, he was honest with me. So obviously, like, he's a good person and he must really be into me. So stupid. So stupid. Like, how dumb can I be? Like, oh, my God. So anyway, like, if you ever are in that situation and somebody cheats on you, before you're even like really, like we weren't even like technically official, sorry, my bangs are bothering me and like, you know. So either way, we're not even like official yet and this guy has already like hooked up with somebody else. So anybody in their right mind would be like, bye sir, see you later. And that's what I should have done. But no, I proceeded to date him for six years. So throughout the relationship, we had tons of issues like because of that girl that he cheated on me with, like, he dated her for such a long time that his friend or his family was like close with her and they would like invite her over while I was at work. I mean, crazy shit. And it's like why I dealt with it is beyond me. I have no explanation other than I was just fucking oblivious. Uh, and not even, I, I wasn't even oblivious is the sad thing because like I knew in my gut that he was there were, like, I knew that it was wrong the whole time. Like, I knew he was probably cheating on me. I didn't have any evidence. I just knew it. Um, and that I just knew the relationship was doomed from the start. But, like, part of me was just so, like, I have to let this run its course. Like, I have to do this. Like, and I don't know if that part of me was, like, you're about to learn, like, the biggest lesson of your life. Because this really did teach me more than anything that probably I've ever been through other than like my grandma dying, who's like my closest person to me. I learned a lot from that. But this, I have learned so much from going through this bad relationship. Like it completely changed my perspective on relationships and the way I handle relationships. So it's a big part of the reason I'm single. Actually, it's the main reason I'm single right now because if I hadn't been just completely destroyed by like how this relationship went I probably would have just jumped into another one and just kept doing that until I just married some fucking guy that I didn't even really care that much about you know what I mean so that's that's how I was dating that's that's how I was doing it was like just basically if somebody was interested I would date them this guy happened to be somebody I had a crush on for a long time so that really like amped me up like oh wow like I've obtained this 
in my mind, unattainable guy. So I was like really on my high horse about it. So the last thing I wanted to do was let it go because he, in my mind, slept around with somebody one time. So like I said, throughout our relationship, we're having issue over issue with this girl. Like she would just make her, like we'd be going good for a long time. Then she'd make her little appearance. Then we'd fight. And finally one day we were fighting over her. And he looked at me and said that if I wanted to, like, keep dating him, that I basically had to stop bringing her up. That, like, he was like, we're never going to move past this if you won't stop bringing her up. Mind you, I was bringing her up because it was like, you know, I would see pictures online where she was, like, out walking his dog with, like, my dog's leashes. And that she was obviously at her house, which I had obviously communicated I was not comfortable with. And, like, like stuff like that. I was bringing legitimate concerns to him. Not, I was not just pulling anything out of thin air, which is what he would tell me. He's like, you're creating scenarios. Like, you're causing fights. You're trying to start fights. Like, um, he would tell me how miserable I was. Like, he was like, you're just always angry. You're always looking for something to be mad about. And, like... It was like I was genuinely bringing legitimate concerns to him. And that's, he completely blew me off. Which in my mind, I was like, I'm crazy. That's that's what I thought. I was like, I must be fucking crazy. Because like all of this in my head makes so much sense. And then I'm bringing it to him and he's not listening. He's basically telling me I'm crazy. So um, we went on like that for a very, very painfully long time. Of just like fighting every six months to a year because old what's her face came and made a reappearance and you'd think at any given point I would have been like this is terrible I need to leave but just <laughs> delusional over little me over here thinking that somehow it's gonna work out in the end like <laughs> yeah it worked out in the end all right but just not the way I thought so anyway like I said we've been having issues um and then I think our breaking point was when I got this house. So my stepdad died, as I'm sure I've talked about a bunch of times. I don't even know what videos at this point, but um, my stepdad died. There was money left to me and I chose to buy this house with it. So my biggest thing, because I'd been living with him and his family this whole time. And like I said, they're inviting his ex-girlfriend over. And there was like way more issues than that. Like way more issues than that. Um, that it's just, it doesn't even matter to get into at this point. But I was, the, the point is, is I was miserable over there. Like literally so miserable living with his dad. So that was like, as soon as I was able to, I was like, get me the fuck out of here. So I got to move out. Me and him getting this like huge huge fight you guys like it was so bad I actually I do know what it was about um it was because basically I knew that I was going to get this house I knew I was going to have a lot more expenses and frankly he didn't help me with anything like he didn't help me financially he didn't help me with cleaning he didn't help me with anything and I like I said I knew we were about to that I was about to buy this house and I was going to have to pay for it myself. I knew that. I knew I was going to have to pay for it myself because, Frank, this guy can't even get a job. So how is he going to pay for it if he can't get a job, right? So I basically started to panic about it. And I was like, basically, if we're going to make this work, then I need you to, like, help me, you know, at least at work or something to make it worth my while. If you're going to come live with me for free, like, it's got to, you know be mutual in some aspect. So, um, anyway, I'd asked him to come help me with a difficult dog at, uh, old shop I worked at. Me and him ended up getting in this huge blow up fight on the way there. Um, to the point, I think I ended up grooming the dog by myself. Like he just like dropped me off at work and like left me there. Like it was so fucking bad. So anyway, then we didn't talk for several weeks. I moved all my stuff into this house and I say this all the time. I should have broken up with him that first time that he was like, I cheated on you. That's when I should have broke up with him. But since I didn't, the real time I really should have broke up with him was when I moved into this house. Um, cause like I said, we didn't talk for two weeks. He went on tour. He didn't talk to me the whole time. And I moved all my shit into this house. He came home. I was still watching his dog for him. He didn't even let me know he was home. I like came, I went to go let his dog out and he was just like there. I was like, okay, cool. So either way, um, then of course, like once he sees like I'm really out, thing, like I'm really like ready to be done with this, then he comes along with the whole like, I want to talk. 
Oh, sure. I bet you do. So my stupid ass was like, yeah, come over and talk. And this, like, honestly, this is kind of, like, fluff at this point, just being real. But, like, he literally came to my house to talk and then sat on my couch like this. And said nothing. Said nothing. I was like, um, okay. I was like, well, here's, here's the thing. And I, like, said my part. And I was like, this is where I feel. I was like, this is where I feel like I went wrong. Um, and this is where you made me mad. Like, or, I don't know if that's, how do you say it? Like, when, you know, like, in therapy, they, like, tell you, like, how to say it. Like, not you made me mad, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I reacted badly to this thing you did. You know, so I'm like trying to be the adult here. I'm trying to be like, yes, I made a mistake too. This is what you did that bothered me. And I'm like, is there anything you want to say? Is there anything you want to add? Nada, right? So that, and that's typical with him. Like he wouldn't talk about anything. Like we'd get in a big blow up fight and he would just like wait a couple hours and then try to come back and like talk like nothing happened. I'm not that person. Like I can't let it go. Like I'm like, you got to talk to me about it. We got to discuss this or like later it's going to come up. That's that's how I am. It's like, if I, if you do something that bothers me, we don't address it. And we just try to go on like everything's normal. The next time you piss me off, I am going to bring up that other thing because it's not resolved. Okay. So anyway, I have to like resolve these things. So anyway, he, I, but I let him slide again. I was like, you know, just let him do his little thing and let him move into my house. It was like kind of slow, but he'd like move, you know, a couple things over. At first it was just clothes and then he's just kind of bring his little TV and then he's then have all the shits here. Right. So, um, I quit my job cause I got bit really badly at that, that shop I was talking about. Um, and I decided that I'm going to start doing house call. Now, I was going broke doing house call. I could not afford the bills. I could not afford to feed us. I was paying for everything for him. Like, not just, like, to pay the bills to keep our house. Like, I'm talking, like, I was buying him food. I was buying him energy drinks. Like, anything that he needed to stay happy, I made sure he had. Okay, that's, I'm an enabler to, through and through. I have really had to learn to not, like, not, not to say that I don't do nice things for people, but I don't, like, overdo it like that. Like, oh, I'll just pay for everything. Just, just anything to make you happy, right? So, anyway, like I said, um, quit, did house call, um, ended up getting the van. And that was really when I was like, this is go time because not only do I have my house to pay for, but now I have an extra like thousand, two thousand dollars a month that I have to worry about with this van. Okay. So I was like, basically I needed him to help me for real. And I kind of, I think I already knew it wasn't going to happen, but either way, I, I tried to hire him. I have a video on that. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. Uh, I talk all about like what it was like working with him. Now, if you have seen that video, then you know that towards the end when I fired him, things were really bad. When I fired him, I also, I told him to get out. I was like, just do it all. Um, I think I said in that video that I was screaming at him in this bank parking lot. <laughs> and I like, when I was doing that, I was like, get your fucking shit out of my house. Um, and me and him had kind of been having fights and every time we'd have a fight, he'd get some, like a few things out and a few things out and a few things out. Um, but then he would like go to his house for a couple weeks and leave his dog with me and shit. And I was like, so I'm like, get your fucking dog, get your shit, get out of my house. I'm done with you. That's it. Because at this point I literally tried everything. I literally gave this man a job. I was like, all you have to do is help me sometimes try the tiniest bit, put in the little tiniest bit of effort. And he just couldn't, he just would not, wouldn't even try. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, well maybe if I break up with him and make him see that I'm being serious, I need his actual help, then maybe just maybe he will actually try to put in some effort. So we break up, right? He gets all the shit out, he goes. And a couple weeks go by, I really wasn't talking to him too much. Like he would message me, but like, I just kind of, I was like, whatever, like, if he, it was just a bunch of excuses why he couldn't get a job and why he couldn't do all this. And I was like, um, because the conditions were, was that if he wanted to, things to work out with me and him, like if he wanted me to work with him, then he had to go get a job. And, and I told him too, I was like, and I'm not talking like, cause he would go get like a bite squad or Uber eats or DoorDash or whatever. And I'm not saying that's not a real job, but 
for him it wasn't like he would work like the bare minimum and he wasn't making any money and it wasn't helpful because he'd done that stuff before so anyway I was like I want you to get a real job I want you to start figuring out what you want to do long term with your life like you can't just be a bum with your life so what do you want to do I need you to start thinking about that so anyway um like I said he moves out a couple weeks go by I'm sitting here in my house. Now, I have, I admittedly, before this, I was the most codependent person in the world. I could not stand to be by myself, not even for two seconds. Like, the thought of being in my house by myself scared the shit out of me. Like, I was fine when he would go on tour for six weeks and I knew he was coming back. But, like, the thought of being like, no, this is me alone by myself completely in this house scared the shit out of me. So, like I said, I'm sitting here, I'm getting lonely, and I'm like... I think I'm gonna invite him back over. You know, I think I'm just gonna, you know, I bet she's getting lonely. So I was about to invite him back over and I hear this little voice in my ear that says, why don't you unblock the ex-girlfriend? Cause I had blocked her a long time ago. Cause like I said, me and her, we don't like each other. We'd have a lot of issues, you know, whatever. So I had blocked her everywhere, right? And I'm like, when I hear this voice, I'm like, yeah, fucking right. I blocked her for a reason. I do not want to see this bitch. Like, that's not going to help me at all in this moment to see what she's doing. Like, why do I care? I'm not, I hate snooping on people. Like, if I feel like I have to snoop on you, then I'd rather just not. Like, I'd rather just not be with you. <laughs> I say as I tell you about <laughs> fucking guy I snooped on him so many times I broke my own rules like because before I dated him I was like I would never date somebody that I had to snoop on and blah 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 but it was like if I didn't have evidence with him like I couldn't say like this is what I saw and here's a screenshot and here's whatever then he would just deny and honestly sometimes even when I had proof he would just deny 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 I, like he just gaslight me call me crazy tell me I was delusional making things up whatever he could say that would get him out of it um so like I said I'm like no nah, I'm not unblocking this bitch like I don't want to see her and it's just like this persistent voice in my ears like you gotta unblock her you have to unblock her and I finally gave in I'm like fine I'll unblock her like it doesn't matter like what am I gonna see I'm like it doesn't matter I'll unblock her I don't give a shit like what am I gonna see so I am blocker. I go to her profile. I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm just scrolling through, right? I scroll down and they were friends. They were friends. After all the issues, me and him had been fighting over this bitch for years. And I knew, like, I'm fucking dumb. I'm like, if you're friends on Facebook, you're fucking her. Like, I already know. You don't even have to tell me because I already know it. So, um, he's still messaging me. He's like, oh, baby, I love you so much. Like, I just want to see you. I miss you. I hate being without you, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I was like, it's so funny that you say that because you don't miss or love me enough to to actually block that bitch like you were supposed to. I see that you guys are fucking friends. I was like, fuck you. I'm done with you. That's it. I know you've been cheating on me. Like, done. Bye. And this man, for 24 hours, denied with every inkling of his being. I'm telling you, this man denied, denied, denied. He was like, no, I haven't seen her. I haven't talked to her. I've never messaged her. He was like, in six years, I've not seen this bitch. He was like, she doesn't, she's not even pretty. Like, I don't even like her anymore. Like, she'd had, she'd had a baby. So he was like, she's, you know, her body's not as good as it used to be. Like, all these, like, terrible things about this girl that I full on know he's fucking. And I'm like, if you're telling me this about her, what are you telling her about me? Okay. Like, I know full well you're fucking her, and you're over here, you're calling her, like, terrible things, first of all. I mean, this man, he has no respect for women at all, so, anyway. So, anyway, uh, I just, I just kept being like, I don't believe you. <laughs> I was like, I don't believe you. I literally just, I had no proof. I didn't even care that I didn't have proof, because I didn't need it, because I already knew. I was like, you, you were cheating on me, and I'm done, and I'm not talking to you anymore. So, I mean, and this man, he's calling me. He was like, I'm on the way to your house right now. I literally, I had to tell him, I was like, I'll call the cops if you come to my house. Like, I'll file a restraining order. I, like, literally, he was doing everything he could to come. Because he knew if he got here that it was way less likely that I'd make him leave. So, I literally, I was like, if you come here, I'll leave. I will call the cops. Like, no. Mm -mm, you're not doing it. Uh, so, we went back and forth like that for about 24 hours. 
And finally he says to me, I'm like, I, I just know you're not telling me everything. And he's like, well, I guess there was this one time that I fucked her. You guess there was this one time that you fucked her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I guess there was one time that I fucked her. I guess there was. Well, no shit. And how many times was that, dumbass? How many times? Oh, I bet it was hundreds. I bet you were just doing it the whole time, you nasty fuck. Anyway, so I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, that's all I needed to know. And I was like, and I already know it wasn't one time. So I, I asked him flat out. I, I was like, so he said, actually, he offered the information. He said that he, after he called me crying that first month that we were together, after he called me, he's like, I'm so sorry. Like, I want to be with you and blah, blah, blah. He said he turned around and went back and did it again the next weekend. <laughs> Like, how low do you have to be to call somebody crying? I was cool with just, like, cut, like calling it off then. I was totally fine with calling it off then. But no, he begged me to stay with him, to turn around and cheat on me again the next weekend. <laughs> like, are you serious? And then all the times, like, I started asking him, I was like, well, what about this time that I brought it to your attention? And he's like, oh, yeah, I was then. And I was like, oh, and even when I brought it up and you called me crazy, you actually did it? And he said, yes. He said, yes. He called me crazy. Told me I was creating scenarios. I literally went to therapy because I thought I was losing my fucking mind. Because this guy was gaslighting me so hard. Making me think I was absolutely insane. And he was actually just cheating on me the whole time. And like I said, all the people I was friends with, like our little circle, they all knew it. I'm like, <laughs> Fuck me, right? Like, what did I ever do to you guys? Like, no, no, you couldn't drop a random hint. Nobody thought maybe you should mention it to me. So I'm not over here looking like a goddamn asshole getting cheated on by this guy that's living in my house for free. <laughs> like, I was, like, literally starving. Starving myself to try to pay the bills <laughs> because I'm supporting this dumbass. And you're telling me he's cheating on me and you knew it and you never said anything? <laughs> Karma, bitch. That's fine. <laughs> It's so fine because like, karma like are you for real are you for real so yeah um after that after he confessed everything he did tell me like he had like run into her he had been talking to her he, everything I already knew <laughs> he just confirmed it um and then he blocked me everywhere because it quote hurt too much <laughs> see other guys flirting with me because I posted I as soon as I found out he'd been cheating on me I was like ah okay bitch so I posted it everywhere I was like I'm single I look I like you know I was yeah I was like I'm single boys what's up I was flirting with people on my pictures and shit like any guy that's commenting I was like yeah I'm gonna flirt with you motherfucker and, my, and so anyway that's why he bought me because it quote hurt too much to see me talking to other people I said I was like okay I was like how do you think I felt watching like finding out that you were just fucking your ex for six years but you're hurt by seeing me flirt with a guy in my comments on a Facebook post okay clear clearly you know my pain <laughs> motherfucker and then, like I said, I had to drop the entire friend group I was hanging out with. Um, I had to drop him and fucking uproot and restart. <laughs> and I'm so fucking glad that I did. I'm so glad that I did. Because look at where I'm at now compared to then. Like, I mean, you can literally just see it in my videos. Like, you can literally see it. <laughs> and I don't even record as much as I want to, honestly. But yeah, it's like night and day. And I'm so much fucking happier now. And if I would have realized, first of all, if I would have known at any point that it was not going to work out and that he was cheating on me, I would have left a long time ago. And that's the main reason I want to do this story is I would, like, I just want, because I actually, like, without, somebody that's very close to me is going through literally the exact same scenario right now. And... I always hope that I can inspire people to be strong, even when it's hard. Like I said, I had no desire to be single. Um, and I, in fact, I kind of wanted to jump right back into another relationship after me and him broke up. But I was I knew it wasn't the right thing to do. I knew that now is the time I had to get to know myself again. 
And I'm so glad that I did that. And I'm so fucking glad I left that relationship. Like, I, I literally cannot express how fucking miserable I was. Like, I woke up every day sick. I, like, like literally felt like a, there was a fucking knot in my stomach every single day. Like, I felt sick. Um, and to go from that to feeling like the most powerful, badass bitch on the fucking planet. Like, I feel untouchable, unstoppable at this point. Like, I know I'm just getting started. And I'm already so fucking proud of everything I've done. Like, I could literally stop progress right now like just stay where I'm at and I would be completely fine like honestly where I'm at right now is a lot of people's end goals like I own my own business I make my own schedule I'm starting to book out for like the year not just you know a couple weeks in advance I've got a lot of clients that book out for the year now um but like where I'm at right now is good it's solid I make money for YouTube you guys bought me this ring light <laughs> you know like and again I'm just getting started 10 years from now, I don't even know where I'm going to be. It's going to be crazy though, I can tell you that. So anyway, I wasted six years of my life on a guy that treated me like shit. Told me I was crazy anytime that I caught him cheating on, on me. To the point that I literally thought I was crazy. Thought I was insane. Thought something was wrong with me. Um, and basically... In a way, I let this guy like ruin my life for six years because basically I thought I deserved it. I thought that's what I deserved because I was, I just believed I was this giant piece of shit and I didn't deserve better. But I, I did. And I have so much more to offer than to be some dumbass guy's girlfriend. And that's all I was when I was dating him was just his fucking girlfriend. Like, I, I swear a lot of his friends didn't even know my name. <laughs> I don't even think, I, I dated that man for six years. And I think out of all of his friends, I may have had full on conversations with like, two of them. Yeah, two. <laughs> six years I dated this guy and only two of his friends would actually talk to me. The rest of them, like, I might as well have been a lamp. Like an inanimate object. Like they literally, like, they were like, oh, there's his sex toy that just sits there in the corner. You don't have to talk to her. She's fine. Like that's literally for six years what I dealt with. And why? Like now instead of having one guy that's mean to me, I have a bunch of guys that message me all the time and are super nice. And that might not be, well, I'm not serious with anybody. That's the thing is like, I'm not settling down. I'm not going out on dates, but you know, I'm a flirt. Listen, I'm a Libra, okay? I'm a flirty little bitch. But anyway, so what I'm telling you is don't waste your time on one greasy motherfucker when you could have like 12 fucking nice motherfuckers in your inbox complimenting you daily and telling you how fantastic you are. So why are you wasting your time on old grimy? And let me tell you this, I have to add this. Do I? I have to. I don't want to, but I have to. You guys. Ugh. So, I think when you spend a lot of, and you guys tell me if you've had this experience. I think when you spend a lot of time with somebody, especially when you know them for like years and years and years, you get a vision of their, of them in your head that like, other people, they don't see that. They see probably a little bit more clearly or maybe a different version or whatever. I... The picture of him I had in my head was like him when he was 16 when I met him and was like, oh, this guy, you know, like that's, that's what I was picturing. And after me and him broke up, probably about six months or so after me and him broke up, somebody showed me some pictures of him. I stare, I was like, I was like, this is him. That's who I was <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys, like, after me and him broke up, he started wearing eyeliner every day, and, like, he's got, like, he was, he was wearing vampire teeth. <laughs> like, he was, he's, like, dressing up like a vampire. I, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I'm, like, I... I'm never ever gonna admit like like give it five years if somebody's like do you know old dumbass I'm gonna be like who what no never heard of him <laughs> the vampire no <laughs> I'm a Buffy fan personally uh so I would slay vampires like not <laughs> it, it, although Buffy did date some vampires but Buffy dated hot vampires like this guy honestly looks like some 
I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> He's looking rough. He's looking really rough. And it made me realize like how much like disassociation I guess I had that I'm like looking at him, I'm like, is that what y'all were seeing <laughs> sometimes? Like, cause that's not what I was seeing. Like I had to like go back and like show like this this is who I thought I was dating. Like y'all I mean he was wearing high water. I it was embarrassing. I was so secondhand embarrassed. You know what? No, I was firsthand embarrassed. I was embarrassed for myself, for lowering myself to that level. To not only date some guy that was cheating on me for six years, but he didn't even look good? What? He didn't even look good, Steve. The fuck? I want a refund. I want all that time refunded because that was bullshit. I call bullshit on the vampire. Mm-mm. Yeah, so anyway... Girl, if you're over there with <laughs> the count, <laughs> if, if you're over there dating Edward Cullen, cut him off, okay? Because you're going to be much happier by yourself, I'm telling you. Like, I have refound my personality. I am so comfortable with myself. I'm so happy to be me. I'm redoing my house right now. I'm really making it feel like mine because I'd never done that since me and him broke up and still very much felt like how it did when he lived here so this actually this was his little fucking room this was his like little game room and now it's my film room bitch it's mine now bitch so anyway uh yeah persistence is key i wish i would have known that all those other times that i caught him cheating on me i was not persistent I would drop it if he denied it enough. Like, I would start doubting myself and I'd be like, oh, like, I'm making up scenarios, whatever, and I would drop it. So, anyway, if somebody is gaslighting you or you think they might be and you really have a hunch that something's going on, it probably is. You're probably not crazy. And don't let anybody make you think that way. And if you're dating somebody or you're spending time with people that are making you feel bad then you need to surround yourself with different people. Like that was one of the most eye-opening things when me and him broke up and I separated myself from all those people that I was with. Um, I remember the first time I hung out with somebody that I could tell liked me. Now, I'm not even talking about a guy. I'm talking about one of my friends from hair school, like one of my female friends. Like I, like we hung out and I was like, wow, like this girl, she's like laughing at my jokes. Like I could tell, I was like, she likes my personality. Unbelievable. Cause all the people I've been spending all my time with, they hated my personality. I was always too loud. I was always too something. I didn't fit in with their group quite right. So they were always telling me there was something like wrong with me. So I remember in the middle of me and his relationship, um, I went through like a really, really low point. And there was one day that me and him got in a really big fight. I went over to my friend's house and I was sitting there talking to like this group of people and I said something and like a bunch of people laughed and I like thought to myself, I was like, oh my God, like I'm funny. And it's like, how sad is that? <laughs> That I got so low that I I really thought I just had the worst personality. Like, I didn't, like, it. I had, like, a realization of, like, oh, yeah, I'm funny. Like, it was, like, a memory, like, oh, yeah, before this guy, I used to be funny. <laughs> like, I used to be funny. Imagine. And, like I said, being by myself and being, like, knowing, like, this is my energy. This isn't anybody else's energy. This isn't me reacting to anybody's energy. This is just me and my little world. It's been so much easier to feel a lot more balanced. So anyway, again, if you're in a shitty relationship, don't be. Like, if you, I, I understand because I felt really stuck with him for a long time. If you feel stuck, start looking for ways out. Like, keep your mind set on that you need to leave and you will find a way. Okay, so stay strong, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to my very long-winded story. I knew this one was going to be a long one because it was kind of a fucked up story. But also, it is such a huge reason that I am how I am. And if you look at videos of me before I dated him, or when I was dating him, sorry, I started filming when I was dating him. So if you go back to those videos and you watch me then versus me now, there's a major difference and that is why. I went through a lot in that relationship. I had two major deaths that happened while I was dating him. My grandma, who was probably, not probably, she was my closest person in the world. She raised me, like, my mom lived there, but my mom was super young. So, anyway, my grandma was, like, my person. And she died, and my stepdad died very unexpectedly. It just kind of blindsided all of us. Uh, so, anyway, I went through two major deaths, and then I basically had my heart ripped out by a dumb boy. 
I hate that it hurt me as bad as it did. Like, I really do. Like, it kind of pisses me off. Like, I feel like he got one over on me. I'm like, you shouldn't have been able to hurt me because you're a slimy piece of shit. But you did. You did fucking hurt me. And I hate that. I hate, I hate him for it. I really do. I hate him for it. Like, because I know I didn't deserve that. And he made me think I did for six fucking years. So, either way, fuck him. Fuck boys <laughs> in general at this point. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm done with men. I don't even want to date them anymore. I'm just going to be a little grooming witch over in my little grooming cottage and I'm just gonna live my little life over here just me and my dogs and honestly life's a lot easier that way it really is I talk to my friends all the time that are in relationships and their shit is complicated okay um so anyway good video I hope I like it when I watch it back because I've recorded this before and I ended up deleting it because I like I said there is like like, I was so angry for so long. Like, now it's just kind of, like, it's kind of, it is laughable. Because I'm, like, first of all, how stupid was I? And, like, I don't know. Like, all you can do is just, like, laugh, right? What am I going to do at this point? Like, I've already been mad about it. I've already been sad about it. And now it's just kind of laughable. The whole thing. His high waters, his vampire look. I was, like. <laughs> He's not even a cool vampire. Like, he'd be, like, an Edward Cullen. Like, I think he was going for, like, more of, like, a spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But, yeah, he's more, like, a count from Sesame Street. And, like, one, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's him. So, anyway, if you see some weird guy walking around looking like a vampire, it's probably my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and being embarrassed with me because it was painful. But, hey, we got it out, and now I'm done with it, and I'm never talking about it again. So, now you know. The, the tragedy that was my ex-boyfriend and that relationship. So anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.